Hi there, welcome to Bite Size Science. My name is Ruth Munro, and I'm usually on the other side of the camera managing Discovery Centre's exhibits team. But today I am very excited to be here with you doing one of my all time favourite science experiments, the baking soda burp. And you know, the best thing about this experiment is that you likely have in your kitchen at home everything you need to do this yourself. So what do we need? Well, you know, baking soda is a big part of this experiment. You probably guessed that already. We also need some vinegar and you're going to want some scrap paper and also a sandwich bag. You might want more than one sandwich bag because it's a great experiment to repeat. Now if you're looking over here at the table right now and you see the vinegar and the baking soda you are likely thinking that you've done this experiment before and you probably have but you and I are scientists that means that we're going to look a little deeper we're going to do a little bit more thinking use our senses and ask questions about what's going on. And to start that off, I'm going to let us take a really close look here at our baking soda. Now, if you didn't know this was baking soda, if someone just gave you a plate of this stuff, you need to find some words to describe what you're looking at. Well, it's a solid, it's white, and it's in a powder form. All right, we've got a white powdered solid. That works for me. How about the vinegar? Again, if someone was to hand you a tall glass of what looks like water here, you couldn't necessarily tell it was vinegar right away. You could say with certainty that it was a clear, colourless liquid. And then as it got a little bit closer to your nose, you use your sense of smell to tell pretty quickly that this was not a glass of water. Someone was trying to trick you. Well, without much more talking from me, let's do what we know we need to do. And that is combine our baking soda and vinegar together to see what happens. I've got a glass here on a plate. Makes it a little easier for cleanup if you don't have it straight on your tabletop. And let us over here add in, we'll do our baking soda first. A couple of healthy scoops there. Oh, let's put in three, why not? Live a little. There we go. I'm gonna pour my vinegar straight in here. Watch what happens. Even if you've done this before, it's always nice to see it again. Whoa, look at that. Lots and lots of bubbles. So what's actually going on inside that glass right now? Well, we've combined two things, our baking soda and our vinegar, and we've got a chemical reaction taking place. Inside there right now, we're making a new thing. It is carbon dioxide gas. That is what is inside all of those lovely bubbles. Now, here's the thing. The carbon dioxide gas is clear, it's colorless. It's not something that you can see with your eyes. We have a better way of proving to you that it is really real, and that is using our sandwich bag and paper. Let me move this over to the side for the moment. We're gonna wanna focus in on our scrap paper. We're gonna use the paper to act a little bit like a time delay or a fuse. We're gonna pour some of our baking soda in there and wrap it up like a parcel. Basically what it does is it stops the vinegar and baking soda coming into contact and reacting right away. It gives us a little bit more time to do our experiment. So we're gonna wrap this up. You don't have to make it look super pretty. All you're trying to do here is get a layer of paper between the baking soda and the vinegar. Excellent, perfect. All right, next we need our vinegar and we're gonna pour it into our sandwich bag. But once again, I don't wanna make a mess here, so I'm gonna put my plate right on the table. Excellent. In goes the vinegar. I think we'll use all of it. There we go. All right, now we drop in our parcel and we can just squeeze some of that air out of the bag, seal it up as well as possible. And slowly we'll start to have that reaction happen again. It takes a little longer, remember, because of the paper. What you might be able to start seeing are some bubbles. Let me hold this up so you can hear. Yep, definitely a chemical reaction going on there. Now, over time, as those two things come together, the vinegar and the baking soda, we're going to have carbon dioxide produced and when those bubbles pop, the carbon dioxide is being released into the bag. But because we have sealed the bag, you know what? It's getting trapped. It's making the bag get a little bit bigger. And if you kind of give it a little gentle squeeze, you can feel that it's getting firm. Now with nowhere to go, that carbon dioxide eventually is going to want to escape. And three, two, one. Just like that. Now, if you're brave and bold, you could reseal your bag and just leave it somewhere. I suggest your sink for this and see what happens. If there is enough vinegar and baking soda left still to react in there, eventually there's going to be a little bit of an explosion. I've been Ruth Monroe. This has been Bite Size Science and do try this at home.